We know that all DNA polymerases catalyze 5 prime to 3 prime strand growth and that no DNA polymerase can synthesize DNA 3 prime to 5 prime. Since this is true, how can we rationalize replication of both strands against their templates at a replication fork? The only reasonable hypothesis was that while one strand could be synthesized continuously as the replication fork keeps on winding, at least one DNA strand would have to be synthesized in pieces or fragments that would later be stitched together. Here is our replication fork modeling continuous synthesis of one strand of DNA in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction towards a replication fork. And the replication of fragments of DNA, also 5 prime to 3 prime, but extending away from the replication fork. The strand made continuously is called the leading strand, while the strand made in pieces is called the lagging strand, in part because its synthesis is slowed down by the need to put the pieces together. The enzyme that stitches the fragments together is a DNA ligase. DNA ligase was known for a different function before it was shown to be essential in replication. During a viral infection in bacteria, the DNA that enters the cell is a linear molecule with sticky or complementary ends, such as those shown here. Once in the bacterial cytoplasm, the linear DNA circularizes because of self-complementary ends. Then a DNA ligase encoded by the viral genome is produced in the infected cell to covalently close the circle. The ligated circular viral DNA molecule then uses bacterial DNA polymerase to replicate itself, eventually producing new viruses. This slide illustrates events after placing a dilute viral suspension on a lawn of bacterial cells on a petri dish. Each virus infects a single cell, which makes more viruses that then infect neighboring cells on the lawn. As more and more cells lice and release new infectious viruses, small clearings develop on the bacterial lawn where the bacteria have lysed. These clearings are called plaques. Okazaki knew the role of DNA ligase in closing bacteriophage DNA circles, and he had isolated several mutant strains of the phage, called T4, that were deficient in making DNA ligase. These phage multiplied more slowly than wild-type phage, as shown by the growth curves on this slide. Because the mutant phage were slow to close their DNA circles after infecting E. coli cells, replication of these mutant phage was also slower than in the wild-type. But Okazaki also proposed that phage DNA replication itself might be using DNA ligase to stitch together fragments of DNA made discontinuously on the lagging template strand at replication forks, and that these mutants were doing this process slowly. So Okazaki did experiments to test his hypothesis. He predicted that during an infection by ligase-deficient T4 phage, replication of new phage DNA would result in the accumulation of short DNA fragments that would not be efficiently stitched together. Here's what he did. He incubated ligase-deficient T4 phage with E. coli cells. He then added radioactive tritiated thymine to the infected cells at 2 to 5 second intervals after infection. In each case, a few seconds after adding the radioactive nucleotide, he extracted total DNA from the infected cells and used physical methods to shear the DNA down to an average of about 10,000 base pairs in length. Finally, he put the sheared DNA isolates through a process called sucrose density gradient centrifugation to separate DNA fragments by size, in other words, by length. Here's what one might expect in this experiment if both strands were somehow synthesized continuously and not in fragments or not in pieces. After two seconds, only short lengths of DNA would have replicated, and the added radioactive nucleotides would be put on the ends of these fragments, as shown in red here. After four seconds of replication, the replicated DNA would be longer, and the radioactive bits would be added to these longer pieces. And after longer and longer times of phage infection, the labeled radioactive nucleotides would be added to longer and longer lengths of replicated DNA. But that's not what Okazaki found in his experiments. This graph plots the sizes of radioactive DNA on the x-axis against the amount of radioactivity of the DNA on the y-axis. Looking at the larger curves on the right side of the graph, 
As expected during an infection, you could see longer and longer DNA being made radioactive, up to the last 120 second time point tested. Of course, few fragments ever exceeded the average 10,000 base pairs, since the DNA had been intentionally cut to that size before separation. But look at the left side of the graph, that small portion circled here. At every time point, even as the overall length of DNA molecules continue to increase, short fragments are accumulating in cells infected with the ligase deficient T4 phage. When Okazaki did the same experiment with wild type phage, adding hot thymine only tagged longer and longer DNA as indicated by the dark blue curves in this graph. And that's because ligase was so efficient that the short pieces that were made were quickly ligated to make long strands of new DNA. Okazaki had demonstrated discontinuous synthesis of short pieces of DNA using the T4 deficient ligase phage, which explained how one strand must behave at the replication fork. In his honor, these pieces of DNA were later named Okazaki fragments. We know that new DNA made along the lagging strand template is made in pieces that are later stitched together by DNA ligase, and that this occurs in all species and all cells. We also know that all species have genes for their own DNA ligase and can therefore make their own enzyme when they replicate their own DNA.